So whenever we think about redeeming the times, <laughs> uh, with God, there's no, there's no expiration date. <laughs> so God has not given us an expiration date on uh, redeeming the time, all right? So when you think of redeeming the time, um, well, the, in, the, in the scripture that we have today is in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse, uh, well, one reading I have is from verse 11, but this first one is from just 15 and 16. It says, Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. The other one is in the Message Bible. It says, Don't waste your time on useless work or mere busy work. Now, some could read that and say, I don't need to go to work anymore. <laughs> Useless work. It's all vain. Vanity of vanities. Read that in the Bible somewhere. No, that's okay. That's just, that's just Solomon spouting off his uh, inability to find God in his departure from God's presence, as it were, departure from God. He, he writes about all how vain everything is. At the end of the book, he finds God. So if you're reading the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes and you think, oh my, everything's in vanity. Why, should, why do we, you know, we should just give up. That's what the book's telling us. And it says, no, no. The book is telling you that without God, everything is in vain. With God, it all comes, back, it all comes together. So that's what redeeming the time is. So don't waste your time on useless work or mere busy work. The barren pursuit of darkness expose those things for the sham they are. It is a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the dark where no one will you see. Rip the cover off of those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep, climb out of your coffins, Christ will show you the light. So watch your step, use your head, make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. <laughs> so when we think of... Um, redeeming the times there's this guy this is a joke okay there's this guy he, he goes to heaven and he's walking down the long cor corridor and on the uh walls there's these clocks and some are moving really fast and some of them are moving really slow and he sees this one clock is barely moving he says well why is this clock only moving why is it moving so slow he says well the clocks move for by people when they sin the clock moves and he says, well, that's Billy Graham's clock. And then he goes down a little further, and this other one, oh, that was Mother Teresa's clock. And the guy says, well, where's mine? Where's my clock? The guy says, and St. Peter says, well, we use that in the office for a fan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't uh, make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. So when we think of desperate, there again, desperate times, we think of times in which things are, you know, on the edge. They could fall either way. Uh, they could go either way. Some, all it takes is one event, one thing to make it fall over. Well, in our lives, we need to take advantage of our time. Um, one day has 86,400 seconds. I looked this up. Uh, one week has 604,800 seconds, and one year has 31,556,952 seconds. Redeeming the time. Well, redeeming the time, <laughs> um, redeem means to make something bad, unpleasant, better, or more acceptable. Redeeming is making something more acceptable. To exchange something, such as a coupon, for money or an award, or to redeem is to buy back. So we look at, um, or exchange, so when we look at redeeming, how can we redeem the time? We, we can't buy back time. <laughs> we, can't, we can't stop the forward progress of time. Some would call it maybe a digress, digress, but the the idea is time continues on. So what do we do with the time that is past? Well, what we do with the time that is past? Let it go. <laughs> that, that's, not for our, that's not our concern. And God isn't worried about what's past. He's, he's concerned about what's in front of us. So God wants us to redeem the time we start where we're at. Um, beginning, like, be, let the weak say that they are strong. 
And we are, we are being thankful for what God has given to us, so we say that God is our healer, God is our provider. We thank God for his divine provisions. Well, if you think about, uh, I was going through trying to find some statistics and things, the average minute per day spent reading, my wife would like this and Glenda would like this, the average day spent reading from 12 um, from the age of, it didn't start out any younger than 12. So from 12 to 24, it's 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, 25 to 34, 12 minutes. 35 to 44, 20 minutes. 45 to 54, 22 minutes. 55 to 64, 30. And 65 plus, 60 minutes. Now, what's the average time spent watching TV? Remember, this is about redeeming the time. K2 to 11 is 25 hours. 12 to 17 is 23 hours. 18 to 24 is 26 hours a week watching TV. 25 to 34 is 32 hours. 35 to 49 age is 35 hours. 50 to 64 is 42 hours. And 65 plus is 47 hours a week watching TV. And the average Christian prays three to seven minutes a day, including meals and time prayer. Redeeming the time. You see, it's important that we look at what we use our time for. Uh, many of our activities are simply, you know, I, I look at the, <laughs> uh, going into nursing care facilities, uh, the TVs are always on. Uh, they're kind of like a distraction and trying to, you know, just get something noise in a room for people to hear or watch. And, you know, and, and visiting people, I, you know, you can't go at certain times <laughs> because certain programs are on and they have to see those programs because as the stomach turns, continues to change every day, you know. <laughs> Life without hope is presented constantly. You know, and, and we look at our society and we look at the television programs, Leave It to Beaver, you know, that was so, you know, this was 30 years ago. And uh, what was the other one? Some other parental show, um, The Nelsons. <laughs> Father Knows Best. You know, whenever we think of those shows, people said they were unreal. They were not real enough. You know, these were the perfect families and nobody lives in a perfect family. So we've gone from being the perfect family to taking the obscure family of total dysfunction and alienation and everything going wrong, and we present that now as the new norm. If you're not living down to this, you've got a great life. <laughs> and so we look at these things and say, what's going on here? Well, redeeming the time. God in, in God in his divine providence can make the rest of your life the best of your life. So it isn't like we're in the wrong place in the wrong time. Uh, we are in the right place at the right time where God has touched our lives, taken our lives, and that we have given it to him. So we've got 1,440 1, minutes in a day. One th what if we made that 1,440 minutes, $1,440? <laughs> and in, every day you were given $1,440 and you had to spend it. There couldn't be any money left at the end of the day because at the end of the day, it's gone. There's no banking. There's no changing. It's no exchanging. It is you got it, you use it, and if you don't use it, you lose it. You know, um, when we look at, <laughs> the, the trouble is that we've had too many days consecutive. How many, how many have been alive for the last couple weeks consecutively? <laughs> that's, that's what happens. We get 1,200 and 440 minutes, uh, 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 excuse me, yeah, dollars a day, minutes a day, and they just keep coming. Whether you like it or not, they keep coming. I remember one person that I was talking with this number of years ago, and we were 
going to admit him, he had called for him to, for, to be admitted to hospice. And he had uh, cancer or some, some disease in which he was terminally ill. And he was very thin, could hardly get around and stuff. And one of the questions on that form is, do you, what t- do you want life support system? And he was, he was vehement that he wanted to be put on a respirator. And I mean, you know, you're, you're very ill. Your, your life expectancy is not that long. The, the doctors have told you this. Your illness tells you this. And, you know, you're, you know, do you really want to be put on a respirator? And he says, of course I want to be on a respirator. I may change my mind. <laughs> I thought, okay. <laughs> it wasn't that he had faith that he was going to be healed. That would be okay. You know, you can go with that. But the idea that I may change my mind. I may want to keep cashing in my 1,440 minutes a day, you know. But at some point in time, the, the, the minutes stop. And uh, one, of the, one of the ideas, uh, may, I know I've used this illustration maybe years, years ago, maybe sooner, I don't know, I don't remember. You know, my 1,440 minutes gets obscured sometimes, <laughs> you know. But... Um, this, we, we look at our life, and so here we are, we, we, you know, we, all the things that we've accomplished in our life, okay? We put them, put them on this big wagon, couple wagons, you know, wagon train or whatever, and we're, we're pulling them into heaven. You know, these are the things I've done with my life, okay? These are the important things. These are the things I'm taking with me to heaven. So we pull into the gate, and uh, if you've ever been, uh, well, the nearest thing I can think of is that we, when you ride the ride at Hershey, going through chocolate world, they, you go through this oven that they have and all these red things come on and you go through this 20 foot long oven in which simulates the heating of the uh, chocolate and you know, whatever. It's not baking the chocolate. I don't know what it's doing. Setting the chocolate? I don't know. But anyhow, when you're going to heaven, here we got all this, uh, all this stuff we're taking with us into heaven, and we enter into this tunnel that goes into heaven, and all of a sudden, whoosh, this big fire comes out, and it consumes everything that's not done for Christ. <laughs> you know, everything that's not been done for Christ perishes. So whenever we get to heaven, we are looking at only what we've done that has been for God is going to make make it there. So in our life here, redeeming the times is recognizing the value of what God has given to us. You see, we all have gifts. We all have talents. We can waste them or we can use them. (laughs) We can take what we've got and and put it to good use. Um, We say, well, you know, maybe uh, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too, too this, too that. I don't have the right place. It wasn't did this. You know, no, you just throw those things out the window and recognize that you have talents, you have gifts, and God wants to use you in your giftings. You know, if God wanted another Billy Graham, I'm sure it would have been me, but he didn't want to. <laughs> he wanted only one, and he made a, you know, that was him. It was a, there was a story of Billy Graham. He was over in uh, Belfast, Ireland, and I think it was in Belfast, it was in Ireland, and um, he was, you know, the, that was back in the time in which the, the streets and so on were not safe to be on, and they were fighting and killing and shooting each other, and Billy Graham kind of dresses up in a disguise with a hat and sunglasses, whatever, and he goes to talk with some of the people that are fighting, and he's going through this whole thing about giving his life to Christ and, and, and all this, and finally the guy says, He says, there's only, the guy sitting there says, uh, if, you know, I can't, I can't listen to what you have to say because there's only one person. If, if Billy Graham himself would come here and stand here with me, he's the only person I'd ever allow my life to influence my life enough to give it to Jesus. He takes off his hat and his sunglasses and says, hello, I'm Billy Graham. (laughs) And, and we look at that, and, and sometimes we look at our life and we say, well, if this would happen or if that would happen, and, you know, and, and, you know it's kind of like our little defense, and, and what happens is God shows up and says, here I am. <laughs> here this is. Everything you've been putting time off for doing this, here it is. 
use it. Redeeming the times is recognizing that God has showed up, that God is there. He's always there. He doesn't just, you know, once in a while show up. He's always there. It's just that we opened our eyes enough to see him and to open our hearts to be receptive of what he wants to give to us. That we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That was in our Sunday school lesson. Grow in grace is that we grow in the giftings that God is bestowing upon our lives. The grace of God is, is that God is giving to us from his nature, from who he is, and from his word. He's giving that into our lives, and we're growing in his grace, growing in our ability to receive what God, has, what God is giving, and then grow in knowledge. So there's a knowledge of what God is wanting to bestow upon us in our life. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That in all, and God is at work in all things. God works all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God is at work in all things. And so we are being thankful for the things, but we're being thankful for the God who will work in the things to take us to where we need to be, redeeming the time. I used to always, uh, <laughs> I figured I was, I was, pretty smart when I was younger, and uh, <laughs> that's a joke. Um, and so I figured, well, you know, if you pray for wisdom, then you, then you have everything, you know. If you pray for wisdom, then you have everything. So I just would always pray, God, give us wisdom, give me wisdom, give me wisdom, all that. And the other, you know, a while back, I um, heard somebody pre- present it this way, God, give me wisdom so that I may serve serve you and serve others. Well, I was wanting wisdom, but I had no direction for it. And, uh, and I was thinking, wow, I didn't put the tag on there. <laughs> Sometimes I, I, you, you assume, well, my assumption was, well, God knows what I meant, but I, maybe I didn't know what I meant. That God would give me wisdom to be able to serve. You see, so we're asking God to be our healer so that we can give him praise or serve him. We're asking God to bestow his blessing upon our life so that we can serve him and serve others. We're asking God that he would take the grace, you know, his, allow his grace to be bestowed upon us so that we can, we can have his blessings upon our life so that we can bless others. So our, our focus is about um, redeeming the times, but we're redeeming the times for a purpose. We're redeeming the times so that we can understand or come to a greater understanding of God, that we can have uh, an understanding of his word and how that that word is applicable to our lives that there is an application of these truths, that God doesn't want just bestow us, you know, here, here's a new car. Well, here's a new car for the purpose of serving God and others, you know, either a testimony or whatever. So God is in the process of bestowing so that we can be serving so that his giftings and his word can continue to grow. That We've got these 1,440 minutes every day and God wants us to use those minutes in a way that is going to refresh us and also to help others. So that this life isn't about me, it's about Christ and how that Christ and his word is going to change me. See, we can, we can uh, redeeming the times uh, sometimes means to turn off the TV or turn off the, the video game or get off of the phone and, you know, stop, you know, and, and anything can go too far. You know, anything can, any blessing can be take, made into a curse if we use it in the wrong way. So there is a time that uh, God is working in our lives and that time is every day. So time is the most valuable commodity that we have in life. Time is the most valuable commodity. You see, no matter how much money, we can always make more money. It's more valuable than time is more valuable than money uh, because you can't make more time. 
You can't add up, you can't borrow time. There was a, a movie, I never really watched it, but it's that somehow that people were on a time and if they had the hours and so on, they could live. If they ran out of hours, they were dead. So anyhow, you would work for time. I guess they were taking a hint from the scripture. So when you woke up this morning, God gave you a present. <laughs> and it's called today. And with that gift comes a responsibility. So the scriptures tell us to redeem the time, to make the most of every opportunity. We have not lost our time. Because if our time was up, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah. So your time is not up. Your giftings and your service to God and to others is not up. And you haven't outlived your usefulness. It's God has begun a new work, a work in us, and he is going to complete it. So God is in the process of completing what he had in mind for us. Now, no matter where we are at in our time frame, we don't know how much time we have left, but we do know we have time. We have time to redeem it. We have time to allow ourselves to serve God in the time that we have left. So make the most of every day. God has entrusted us with his life and his will and his word. We don't have to know everything there is in the Bible. <laughs> you know, we, we just need to know the one who wrote it, inspired it, and that is Jesus. And you have the seeds of greatness that are there inside of you. The, the dreams are still there. So awaken the dreams, awaken the knowledge, stir up the giftings that are inside of you. So we redeem the time to help others. We redeem the time to help others. And uh, this is uh, Saul. He tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him. You see, Saul <laughs> could have been lost to the uh, church if Barnabas had not been there to give him position or to recognize what God had done in his life. Uh, Bar you know, Saul had you know, done his best to destroy the church and people had all this fear and anxiety of, of Saul. And Barnabas is the one who said, no, we've got to listen to him. God has, had, has done a great work in his life. And Saul overshadows Barnabas in the scripture. But without Barnabas... Saul may have never even got a chance. So, you see, our giftings aren't about making ourselves big in our own eyes. It's about helping others achieve their dreams, help, helping others achieve their place in the, in the body of Christ, that we find that God is willing to allow us to help them become a better person. And how do we do that? We're redeeming the time. How are we doing that? We're by smiling, encouraging. We can do this. You can make this. We find a way to make others win, to help them become uh, more complete in their, in their life. Redeeming the time is giving more and having more. <laughs> One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, and become, and come, but comes to poverty. The Message Bible has it. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. So we find that redeeming the time is just giving of what we have, the time that we have, to help people get where they're going, to help people become better in what they do. In Thanksgiving, you know, what are, um, we can't go back and, and, and uh, help the pilgrims. <laughs> we can't go back and help the, the family, our own family, from years ago. Uh, we've been cleaning out our house and uh, uh, taking the books, and got, Rhonda's been going through the, the desk and so on. Me, I look, I throw. Rhonda looks, she reads, she studies. And she remembers, and she cries, and it's only one picture, you know. And there's hundreds of them there, you know. 
Uh, and uh, she remembers, and she does remember. She got a picture, and it matches the picture in her head, and boom, she can start on about 10 pages with that one picture. And, uh, but redeeming the times, that sometimes we don't see how valuable we are, uh, and, and sometimes we need to look at the, that picture. The picture of when you touch someone's life. You know, to, to me, um, uh, most of the time, uh, whenever I meet people, they know me and they'll, they'll say something, not the people that I've helped out over the years, that they'll say and they'll talk and how wonderful it was and how great I was, how comforting it was to have. And that was God being there. But God has given me the ability to forget. Uh, I'll blame him. And, uh, and I forget their name and I forget the situation, and, but they remember that picture. And they remember the picture in which I was there with them in a very difficult time. And that what I said or what I did was God working through me to touch their lives and to help them. And so to their picture, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> you know, when Rachel worked at uh, Storybook 4, she was Little Miss Muffet. Well, yeah. That was a perfect one. <laughs> she worked at Mary Mary Quite Contrary at Storybook Forest. You know, that was Rachel. That script was written for her. <laughs> they even made a costume for her. But, yeah, but what she said was, I am in more kids' pictures than you can ever imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And have Mary Mary Quite Contrary. And, you know, there's Rachel smiling, holding these, these kids, you know. And, you know, it's... But you see, we are... We all of us, in our giving, sometimes we don't recognize the, the giftings that God has given us to help other people. And um, if we thought it was spectacular, then we probably wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> uh, so God is the one who takes what we have, and as we redeeming the times, as we are giving of our time or giving of more of what we have, what we're doing is sharing with people in need. And maybe that's all they need is your handshake, your blessing, your prayer, your whatever it is. When you're doing it, we're doing it for Christ. So redeeming the time is that we do this, and it isn't that um, we're so wise, God give me wisdom, but God give me wisdom to help other people. So, and to serve others by serving you, then all of those things that we do in r helping others are part of that wagon that we pull into heaven. <laughs> and when the fires, of, we pass through the fire, uh, as it were, we don't go through the fire, it's just an illustration. As we go through that, only what is done for Christ will last. There'll still be a lot in there. Because that was done for God, that was done for God, that was done for God. And so our life matters because we matter and the giftings that we have matter. And God wants to use those giftings to serve others. And as we help others reach their goals, we in turn are arriving at ours. Amen. So we're redeeming the time. Redeeming the time... We're being thankful for what we've got. We're being thankful for how that God has blessed us. And, you know, also be thankful in remembering. You know, um, remembering the dream. When Joseph, and I'll close with this, when Joseph was sold and, you know, his brothers, he told his brothers about his dream and they get all bent out of shape and <laughs> they throw him in a pit and they were going to leave him there, but they sold him to a caravan going to Egypt. And, you know, all these years that he, you know, he ends up being in, in Egypt and, you know, betrayed again and in prison. And then finally he interprets a dream and ends up being second command of all of Egypt. It was when his brothers, the situations changed in which there was a famine and his brothers came to Egypt and they needed food. And who they had to come to and who they bowed down to? Joseph. And as his, as his brothers are bowing down before him, Joseph 
remembered his dream. So his dream was not one, you know, it, it was there that inspired him, but it, that while he was his slave in Potiphar's house, he was, people, people were not bowing down to him. Whenever he was in prison, people were not bowing down to him, but he still had a dream. And in that reality of everyday life, there wasn't, there was, there was, it was impossible for it to come, come to fruition. It was impossible for that dream to happen. But God had things in place. And when he arrived at the place and Pharaoh had the dream and he interpreted the dream, he ends up second in command of Egypt and his brothers come and bow before him. That was what got him thrown in the pit in the first place. And God had brought him full circle <laughs> to where his brothers were bowing down before him and they didn't even know it. And God has a way of bringing us to the place where the things that he has put in our hearts, the dreams that he has put in our hearts, he is going to bring them full circle and bring them to, re to reality in our lives. So do not give up on your dream. Redeem the times. Joseph made the best of his time in Potiphar's house. Betrayed. He made the best of his time in prison. He was leader in the prison. Forgotten. But at the right time, he, was, he had redeemed the times he ends up being second in command of Egypt. So be thankful. God is at work in all things. The prison, Potiphar's house. God is at work in all these things. Let us see the hand of God, receive the grace of God, the gift things that he has upon our lives, and redeem the time. Jose, I had a song. I was... Did, did, I, was, I didn't sing this. I was, wanted Jose to play it, but we'll just get a snippet. Do you have it? The whole video. No, this is, you don't want to see the whole video. It's just, go, you play just a snippet of it, if you would. <laughs> Does anybody know, really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? And the answer is yes. <laughs> I was going to play that at the beginning. That's not a good altar call song. I'm sorry. <laughs> but... Uh, that's it. Does anybody really know what time it is? And God does. And does anybody really care? Yes, it is Jesus. And we are at the right place, at the right time, in the right place and right position in our lives to receive the grace and the mercy of God, to build upon what God has already brought to fruition and go from here knowing that we have purpose in fulfilling the will of God and the dreams of our lives. That's what time it is. Amen. Let's stand, shall we? <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you that you know what time it is. <laughs> and God, it, it's a time for us. A time to pray. <laughs> a time to laugh. A time to be born. A time to grow. A time to be blessed by the favor of God, the strength of God. So, Lord, we thank you for this special time of our lives, that we are at the exact place where we need to be. And God, you will work in our lives to bring about your purpose. So bless our lives. Let us be thankful, Lord, not only for what we have, but God, for the grace that you're bestowing upon us, the giftings that you bestow upon us for the needs of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus for loving, forgiving, blessing, giving me the gifts that I need that I can fulfill my will for you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, does anybody know what time it is? <laughs> Amen. <laughs>